Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I'm looking at part 2 of Genesis Apologetics' If I Were Satan, I Would video. So far it seems to be that Satan would promote scientific knowledge that God seems to want suppressed for some reason. Let's see if it gets any better. I'll build my shrines of evolution using taxpayer dollars all over America. That taxpayer dollars line seems to make it into a lot of creationist propaganda stuff. Like, you can teach evolution all you want, just don't use my precious precious tax dollars to do it. Because, you know, public education is a bad thing. Well, sorry, but as long as the scientific consensus remains that evolution is true, the public education institutions will use tax dollars to explain it. If you can find evidence to disprove evolution, get it peer-reviewed, and then fight the scientific battle to have it become consensus, then watch as all of the scientific institutions, public and private, start teaching the new consensus. That's how science works. It is not a decree handed down from on high. There is no council of scientists who determine what is and is not allowed. It's all evidence based. Creationism does not have sufficient evidence backing it up, so it is not presented as science in scientific institutions, plain and simple. And virtually every other country, and most people, will walk through these places not even knowing my deceptions. In fact, I'll have them thinking that only the smartest people think my way. If you think that only the smartest people believe in evolution, then yeah, that is a lie. I have personally met some really dumb people who do accept evolution. However, there is a definite correlation with education level and acceptance of evolution, so you don't have to be smart to accept evolution, but the more educated you are, the more likely you are to accept it. Like it or not, that is simply a fact. And those who don't are closed-minded simpletons. There are some very intelligent people out there who do not accept evolution. You're trying to paint this as a black and white issue when it's just not. In my experience though, the closed-minded bit is true. I mean, if you start with the assumption that God created everything six to ten thousand years ago, and that this assumption cannot possibly be wrong no matter what the data says, then that is by definition closed-minded. To help solidify the idea of millions of years of deep time when they are young, I'll leverage their God-given desire to be fascinated using the beasts of old. The dinosaurs. Dinosaurs lived a long time ago and happened to be extinct, and all the evidence points to them having gone extinct 65 million years ago. If God did not want us to think that, he could easily have kept some of them alive to modern times or at least provided evidence that they lived with humans. And yes, I know, birds are dinosaurs, but you know what I mean. If you could go to the zoo and see a stegosaurus, that would be much more compelling evidence that dinosaurs lived with people than the fraudulent footprints that are the only evidence as it currently stands or the fraudulent Inca stones, or the cave paintings that only look like dinosaurs after someone tells you that it looks like a dinosaur. Much like you don't see a bunny in the clouds until it's pointed out that it looks like a bunny. That's actually part of our brain's pattern recognition system. When you look at something unknown, your brain makes a decision as you are looking at it about what it thinks it should be, and then it works to make it look more like the thing that it decided it should be in a kind of feedback loop. And this function of our brain is the main force behind many ghost encounters. You're sure that was a person you saw in the shadows, but it disappeared the moment you focused on it. Must have been a ghost. Or it's just your brain's pattern recognition system being a jerk. So last week we learned that your brain is a douchebag for not remembering things properly, today we learn that your brain is a jerk for making you see things that aren't really there. The more I learn about how the brain works, the more clear it is to me that eyewitness testimony is probably the worst evidence for anything. Also, just to keep things honest, I learned this from the podcast The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe hosted by neurologist Dr. Stephen Novella, but I can't find the specific episode at the moment. And yes, I do recognize the irony of pointing out how unreliable our brains are and then admitting that I'm getting this information from my memory. Anchoring their extinction to some random asteroid 65 million years ago. I mean, if the randomness of it bothers you, then feel free to say that God hurled that asteroid at the Earth to cause the extinction event that eventually led to human dominance. It's not like that would be the only claim that makes God the cause of a mass extinction event. I'd rather do this than let them discover that billions of fossils buried in sedimentary rock all over the world are the result of God's judgment in Noah's flood. Except that floods don't lay down sediment like we see in all these rock layers. Some of the layers are sediment that has to be dry, like sandstone. Some are volcanic ash. Some are glacial deposits. Some are mudslides. 
The point is, we can tell by examining the layer what kind of deposit it was, and there is no possible way that they all could have been laid down during one single flood event. I mean, just look at the chalk deposits in Europe, those were caused by the skeletons of microscopic organisms sinking to the seafloor when they died. There aren't enough resources on the planet to sustain those organisms in the numbers that would have been required for them to have all died in a single event. It had to be a slow deposition over longer periods of time than creationists claim the universe has existed for. I don't want them fearing any judgment, especially their own, if they leave this world without the salvation found only in Jesus Christ. I mean, this is one of those moments where I would just want you to provide some evidence that God exists, and that it's the God of the Bible. Then I might be scared. Not fear in the reverent sense like you're meaning, but rather terrified that such a monster is real. When my lies become widely accepted, students who want a college degree will have to take several required classes that soak them with my lies of evolution and deep time. I know, it's so terrible that if they want a degree, especially one in a scientific field, they'll have to learn about science. And that includes the fact that a good chunk of modern science would look completely different if the universe were indeed less than 10,000 years old. Classes like geology, earth science, astronomy, biology, philosophy, world history, anthropology, life science, humanities, and many others will be filled with my lies. AKA, don't bother with education. No need to think about how to reconcile science with your religious beliefs, just keep believing in a literal interpretation of a book that was clearly not meant to be taken literally. Stop thinking, stop learning, just believe and do as your religious leaders say. Most won't ever learn about places like Mount St. Helens, where canyons were formed rapidly with countless layers. Yes, some sedimentary layers do form rapidly. Volcanic deposits are one of these types of layers that forms rapidly. And surprise, surprise, if you take the dreaded geology courses that you mentioned earlier, you would learn that geologists know how to tell these types of layers apart. You might even learn how to tell them apart for yourself. I'm skipping a bit now because they're bringing up the rocks that formed in the Mount St. Helens eruption, and how creationists sent samples of these rocks to labs to be dated using incorrect methods for the sample's age. I already dealt with that claim in another Genesis Apologetics video, so I will leave a link to that video if you're interested. Uh, be nice, that's an older video of mine, and apparently I was a lot lazier back then about editing out my ums and uhs. I'll be sure that hundreds of researchers are supplied with endless resources to go dig up old ape bones. I'm sure they wish the resources were endless. Now here's the question though, should I treat that statement like Genesis Apologetics treats the book of Genesis, and take it literally? because then the simple fact that resources on the planet are limited proves that they are lying. Or was that statement clear hyperbole meant to make a point? Kinda like the book of Genesis appears to be a metaphor meant to make a point. Then use their imaginations to make them look like early humans. The artistic renderings are a combination of scientific data and artist interpretation. I'm actually not sure if the image on the right is supposed to be an Australopithecus afarensis, which is the skeleton on the left, uh, the image the Smithsonian has on their website for the Afarensis is this one. Looks like the cheekbones are a bit more pronounced to me. I might be wrong, I'm no expert, but either way, this is an application of forensic techniques that have been used to identify human remains in recent times. So if you don't think that we can trust the techniques for ancient ape remains, then we shouldn't use them in forensic work today. Most students won't even know that you could only fill up a pickup truck with all the bones that supposedly prove human evolution. I don't know if that claim is true, and quite frankly, I really don't feel like putting in the effort it would take to calculate the area of the pickup truck bed and the area of all the bones that we have. Suffice it to say that a big enough pickup truck is sufficient space to house potentially thousands of fossil specimens, and that is plenty to establish several species' probable positions on the phylogenetic tree. You'll think. The ground is filled with Lucy's, when there's only enough bones to scatter on a picnic table. Oh, you were just talking about Lucy? Well, all the bones covering a picnic table, which from that picture looks to be a rather large picnic table, are plenty to establish that Australopithecus afarensis did indeed exist, and to establish what their general body plan would be, and to know that they walked upright, and to know how big their brains are, and more. Are you denying that that species existed? It's funny. Peter even said that this will be part of my strategy in the last days. Okay, just to save you guys some work, I will read that out quickly for you. 
Scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, and all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water by which the world that existed perished, being flooded with water. I don't see anywhere in there a mention of people saying that ancient ape remains are potentially related to human beings. That would have been a rather remarkable and specific thing that God could have included in the Bible if he so chose, and would have gone a long way to verifying the Bible's validity. As it stands, saying people will make fun of us for saying silly things is not much of a prophecy. I'm done with this video now. He goes on for several more minutes, but it's all a repeat or rephrasing of things that he said earlier in the video. They even reuse the same images and video clips because they couldn't be bothered to try and hide the fact that they're just stalling for time. But I do want to show you this. They'll be much easier to uproot later in life, especially when they'll be looking for a reason to ditch their faith to enjoy the temptations I will bring them in college. That pretty much sums up the whole video. College bad. Education bad. Don't stay in school, kids. It'll do more harm than good. What a terrible message to try and disseminate. This whole video is basically them trying to undermine anyone who has expertise in a scientific field. If an astronomer tells you something happened billions of years ago, they're either brainwashed or lying. If a geologist mentions a rock layer from the Cretaceous period, they're either brainwashed or lying. Don't look at the evidence they present, or you might get brainwashed too. Ugh, disgusting. Oh, and before I forget, here's that disclaimer they put at the end for anyone who might get offended. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but feel free to pause the video if you want to read it. Basically, it just says that their target audience for this video are Christians who aren't their preferred brand of Christianity. Because a Christian who believes in evolution is a pretty horrible thing, I guess. So they're basically saying that if you're an evolution-accepting Christian and you got offended, then sorry, not sorry. We're right, you're wrong. Drop out of school before it's too late. Anyway, remember to follow me on Twitter and support me on Patreon. See you next time.